so today we will discuss development of aorta development of aorta starts at third week of intrauterine life so first there will be if you think this is gut in the middle there will be gut that is elementary tract anterior to elementary tract there will be an uh, artery called ventral aorta and posterior to that there will be another artery called dorsal aorta these two will be connected by aortic arches so there will be six pairs of aortic arches on both sides see these are aortic arches and after that these two ventral aorta will be fused to form aortic sac whereas these two dorsal aorta will be fused to form descending aorta so how will this arch of aorta will form this left half of aortic sac and left fourth arch artery and dorsal aorta in between left fourth arch artery and seventh intersegmental artery i will tell you what are these intersegmental arteries this is seventh intersegmental artery in between seventh intersegmental artery and fourth arch artery this part of dorsal aorta and this fourth arch artery that to left fourth arch artery and left half of an aortic sac all these things will form arch of aorta this one and this descending aorta will be formed by the fusion of this dorsal aorta and this dorsal aorta okay and here this ventral aorta left half left half will be forming arch of aorta and right half it will form common carotid artery and from there upwards above third arch it will be forming external carotid and internal carotid arteries so this is common carotid artery right half of aortic sac and above the third uh, artery third arch artery there will be external carotid and internal carotid arteries and this will be arch of aorta here this is pulmonary trunk and this is right pulmonary artery this is left pulmonary artery and this is the artery which connects pulmonary artery and aorta this is ductus arteriosus and at birth this ductus arteriosus fuses uh, to say accurately after 4 days of birth this fuses this closes ductus arteriosus closes after 4 days of birth now this dorsal aorta will give three sets of branches what are these these are ventral splanchnic branches which supply gut and its derivatives lateral splanchnic branches which supply intermediate mesoderm and somatic intersegmental arteries these intersegmental arteries are important these are present at each segment cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and coccygeal at all these segments there will be intersegmental arteries and each of these intersegmental arteries have a dorsal branch and a lateral branch this dorsal branch will supply back okay ventral splanchnic artery will supply gut and its derivatives lateral splanchnic artery which supplies intermediate mesoderm and somatic intersegmental artery which can be cervical thoracic lumbar sacral and coccygeal and do, which has dorsal branch and lateral branch dorsal branch supplies back and this dorsal branch again gives rise to spinal branch which supplies spinal cord and there are what are called as axis arteries for upper limb and lower limb there are axis arteries these axis arteries will be derived from this intersegmental arteries upper limb will be located at the level of cervical vertebra so upper limb artery will be derived from seven cervical intersegmental artery 
from the seven cervical intersegmental artery axis branch or axis artery of upper limb will be derived from this axis artery there will be development of axillary artery brachial artery and anterior interosseous artery okay i, re I will repeat again this intersegmental arteries will form axis arteries for both upper limb and lower limb upper limb will be present close to cervical vertebra so from the seven cervical intersegmental artery there will be formation of axis artery and from this axis artery there will be development of axillary artery brachial artery and anterior interosseous artery okay now for the lower limb the axis artery will be developed from fifth lumbar intersegmental artery because lower limb is close to lumbar vertebra so fifth lumbar intersegmental artery gives rise to inferior gluteal artery longitudinal anastomosis between perforators there will be perforators in the leg these perforators are important so per longitudinal anastomosis will be there in between these perforators that will be derived from this intersegmental artery and also popliteal and peroneal arteries are also the derivatives of this axis artery of lower limb once again axis artery of lower limb will be derived from fifth lumbar intersegmental artery from this axis artery there will be inferior gluteal arteries and longitudinal anastomosis from the perforators and popliteal artery and peroneal artery now we will see the development of vertebral artery before seeing the development of vertebral artery if you know the adult vertebral artery there will be some parts this is first part of vertebral artery this is second part of vertebral artery and this is third part and this is fourth part now from the seventh intersegmental artery this is intersegmental artery seven cervical intersegmental artery the first part of vertebral artery will be developed from this first part that is this part will be developed and post postal anastomosis between dorsal rami will form second part post costal means behind this behind this transverse processes there will be anastomosis of intersegmental arteries see these are intersegmental arteries and all of these anastomosed here and this one forms second part of vertebral artery and third part will be arriving from segmental first cervical intersegmental artery from the dorsal ramus these arteries will be forming from dorsal ramus not the lateral ramus i said there are, there will be dorsal and lateral branch right from the dorsal ramus this will be seen from the dorsal ramus of seventh cervical intersegmental artery first part will be formed and from the anastomosis of all these dorsal ramus second part will be formed and third part first cervical intervertebral artery dorsal ramus and this fourth part will be spinal branch of dorsal ramus so dorsal ramus will give rise to spinal branch so first cervical intersegmental artery has dorsal ramus and the spinal branch from this dorsal ramus and dorsal ramus will form third part whereas spinal branch will form fourth part okay i will repeat again so somatic intersegmental arteries will have dorsal branch and lateral branch this dorsal branch will form vertebral artery and again this dorsal branch will have spinal branch you will see now seven cervical inter intersegmental artery will form first part whereas these anastomoses will form second part and dorsal ramus of first cervical intersegmental artery will form third part and spinal branch of this dorsal ramus will form fourth part